Hey guys, I'm the one you lost, and in this video I'm going to show you my process that I've been doing during my studying to kind of get better drawing uh, skin and just rendering in general. So we're starting off with the sketch here, and I didn't know what I wanted to do first. I was kind of like playing around with different pose ideas, but I ended up finding one that I liked based off of a um, an artwork, and I'm pretty sure it was based off of a model because the rendering was very realistic, so I wanted to try to learn from that. But as you can see, I'm starting off with this sketch, which looks nothing like the final product because I could not figure out what I wanted to draw. And that's okay, that's the whole part of the process, is discovering what you want to draw versus what you don't want to draw. So here's where I try to kind of find the pose a bit, and it starts off... Um, decent but I ended up not liking it so I had to change it later. I did think that it was a good idea to leave the entire uh, sketching process in so you can see that I don't just immediately start with the idea that I have in my head. Sometimes you have to go in, you have to find references, figure out what you want to make. So if you ever feel like you're caught in an art block where you don't know what um, pose you want to do, I do recommend looking up um, models or pinup artworks from the 50s because they have a lot of cool, very attractive poses by very talented artists in the past that you can learn a lot from. And we're approaching the point now where I started to figure out what exactly I wanted to draw. And I had a good reference in front of me, so I knew what I was doing, and I kind of just had to follow it and make sure that it looked correct. Yeah, we have kind of like a sportswear look, like almost like she just got finished wiping uh, her face with her shirt, which, you know, girls probably wouldn't do that, but it's uh, it's okay. It's, it's an artwork. It's not a real person. So now we have the idea, which is solid, and I'm going to start planning out the rendering for this artwork. And... What I had planned ended up being a very dumbed-down version of what it ended up becoming. The, the final render was incredibly detailed and really complex compared to my other stuff. So that was something that was really uh, good for me, in my personal opinion, because it pushed me to spend way more time rendering than I usually do. Um, you'll notice in the sketch, in the original sketch, that the head is way too small. And that can happen sometimes. Um, anime is kind of tricky where the heads are larger, but not too large, depending on your style. If you're drawing like a more childlike character, kind of like a lowly-esque character, you're going to go for a larger head and a smaller body. But I'm trying to go somewhere in between realism and um, fiction. So I had this alternate idea of having like these lava-esque lines because I was kind of inspired by like the Pokemon um, third third gen remakes, you know, Alpha Sapphire and uh, Omega Ruby, and I like the idea of kind of that those, those primal lines that I thought was really really cool. So I wanted to make an attempt at that myself. Um, I couldn't decide whether or not I wanted a background originally, so I was like playing around with an idea of water, but I ended up going against it personally. Um, I did some adjustments here, and I had this fun idea for, like, draping hair, because that is my absolute favorite to draw. Anything draping is, like, my absolute favorite thing. So, there's a bit of, bit of a jump here. I made some corrections, and uh, but I didn't record myself doing it, and I apologize for that, but um, I have a common issue where I end up... Um, Forgetting to hit record, if that makes sense. So now I'm planning out all the colors. So when it comes to the line art that's coming up here pretty soon, I would like to uh, just point out and say I completely forgot to record myself rendering the clothes. Um, I came back after dinner, forgot to hit record, and was like, well, crap. So here's where I make some adjustments to the body because the body uh, was a little bit not correct. So here we are. Now we're getting to the line art. And line art takes a while. It always does. It's one of those things that, like, 
there's a lot of uh, talented artists who do not do line art. And you don't have to do line art. That's something that... um. Don't let people tell you line art is required. I may like to do it, but you definitely don't have to draw line art to make a good artwork. If you treat it like a more painterly artwork, you can get away with not doing lines. So don't think you're forced into doing what you see others do online. So I'm kind of getting everything to look correct. I, I made a mistake in the line art where the torso didn't line up with the shoulder correctly. So I had to make adjustments there. But as you can see, I use very thin lines and my canvas is big. My canvas is usually 4,000 by 6,300 DPI. That way I can put it on a print if I go to convention to sell it. Um, and then I use a four point um, G pen. If you um, if you want, you can ask in the comments, and I can link to you my brushes that I use for my rendering. Like almost ninety percent of my artwork is done with the G pen, and I just use the blend or blur tool to um, blend the colors together, and then occasionally an airbrush as well. Nothing crazy fancy. I just do what I can when I can. Um, one thing you'll also notice once it's time to start rendering, you'll notice that I um, erase lines sometime. Because um, it's important whenever you're doing lines to not hold yourself to them forever. Sometime to get that realistic render, you have to forego the lines that you put in for the sake of the render looking better. And that's a good thing to keep in mind. Do not be afraid to erase line art after you start coloring if you no longer need them. Again, I've been doing those fierce eyes and I'm really starting to get good at them at this point. It was one of those things that when I first did it, I wasn't sure if I would get it right. It started with the uh, crony artwork, like shoot, like maybe like four or five months ago. And since then I've like really kind of honed in and gotten better at doing it. Um, in terms of the hair for this artwork, um, I felt like I did okay, but not fantastic. Um, for example, the uh, the sideburn bangs that are there by the ear, they look kind of boring, and they're a bit chunky, and they don't make a lot of sense, so I'll have to keep that in mind next time if I want to do better. I'm a really big fan of drawing uh, hair that's tied in the back, where the uh, they kind of like hugs the scalp, and you have lines that kind of guide it's definitely one of my more preferred hairstyles, no matter the character. I like to draw a rendition of that character with like either a ponytail or twin tails or something like that, just because it's very cute, and it's a whole lot of fun to draw, and it's just what I like. So now we're starting the rendering, and I actually didn't do base colors on everything before I started rendering. You will see that I very clearly have a reference in front of me because I just go in and I start adjusting immediately. It doesn't make sense yet, but it will very slowly. Or quickly. I'm surprised how quick this actually is. But yeah, there we have it. We already have a really nice looking uh, abdomen or belly. And we're going for soft shading and not necessarily hard shading for this particular artwork. So now we're starting to get everything where the armpit is. We're using the selection pen to kind of quarantine off places we don't want rendering to happen. Kind of using the selection pen for rendering is vital for a good gradient. And I would really recommend experimenting with limiting where your areas that you're selecting focus on. It's basically like airbrush works best once you're using the selection pen. We are going to see a jump after I do the face because I add the base colors to the skin, not the skin, the uh, clothes, but I forget to record myself rendering them. Like I said, I, uh, I went to go eat, came back, forgot to hit record. Happens very often. I wish I was better at it. So we're going to see a jump here pretty soon. Yep, there it is. Well, now you see it. It's completely rendered. <laughs> Sorry. But yeah, it has this like lifelike look to it that I'm very proud of in this particular artwork. I ended up going in and uh, adjusting the colors to make it look more cartoony later using higher saturation. 
because I didn't want to go for a fully realistic look. So here we go. We're about to start rendering the hair. We're just adding little details to the skin to kind of make it blend a bit better. I added a texture to the clothes to kind of make them feel a bit more realistic. And yeah, I'm super proud of that. Definitely need to do that more. We almost have kind of like a very stretchy material look. And there we go. We rendered the hair super quick. Just because it's more uh, simplified than the rest of the body. Starting to make small adjustments. I'm adding the uh, primal look back. We're doing some tonal curve to kind of bring all the colors together. A multiply layer to kind of add a little bit more depth to the character. Just a little bit. We're using the uh, airbrush as an eraser to kind of bring it to life. We're adding the add glow. Bringing some of the darker uh, highlighted parts of the hair a bit more to life. We're now doing a hard light in the post-processing to kind of uh, push the uh, colors a bit more. Make it almost glow. We're using motion blur on this feather brush that I have that I found on Clip Studio's um, asset store. And now we're basically getting toward the end here. Use some chromatic abrasion and there we go. If you like this video and like my new rendering style, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell. Helps out a whole lot. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.